to Storm's Tech Corner, the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast, all things technical and gaming. I'm Storm Lords, Cold Guild Master at DCN Guild's Hands of Fate and ESO, Council Member of the Hands of Fate Guild and Ashes of Creation. Welcome. I'm going to look at Atlas, the pirate MMO, obviously. Um, launch day was just about a week ago, and so we have some things to talk about. I'm going to technically look at Atlas, give it a small game review, small gameplay. Um, but let's look at it. Let's see the way it works uh, and we'll see how it was built um, from a high level perspective. All right, here we go. All right, so we're going to do this a little different out of order than I had originally thought, which is my choice because I get to do that. We're going to sit here on this raft. We are sailing um, again. We talked about how you look. We're sailing through M12 because. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of pirates down in the M12 area because that's a, one of the power, storm, power stones is there. I am actually want to go up to M11. Uh, now, what I'm doing is M11 is a sector, which you can then scroll out and see. But there's, you know, see the fog of war. You can't see. Oh, there's my company. Shh, don't say anybody. Um, you have this fog of war. So you can't see um, what's going on. But there are websites even day one there were websites you could go to and you could bring up maps um, of Atlas so let's bring up the one I was looking at um, nope I'm cold so let's go back while I'm looking at the map um, and let's bring it up whoop ahoy ye matey ahoy and there goes another pirate who doesn't have any guns so he's not gonna chase me but he talked that's okay. Um, I don't have my sound plugged in, I hope, but that's all right. Uh, he didn't kill me. Uh, so while we're sailing, uh, I'm going to show you that map again. I didn't see him coming through. There's actually a lot of people in this game. Um, I think that's one thing they need to work on is it's um, supposedly you're out in this lonely sea, but there's a lot of people for a lonely sea. So if we're in, um, what did I say we're in? We're sailing sort of slow because we're going not quite with the wind if you see the sailboat in this corner there um, we are in m12 we're going to m11 which means we want to get to the southern map of uh, the eastern zone so if you see here what i'm using is uh, game.map game-maps.com uh, we're going to sail through m12 and i want to get up to this small island about there in the middle ish of m11 before we get to the big one so that's what I'm doing, but if you notice, I'm going sort of slow with uh, the sailboat. The sail is facing sort of the wrong way, just so it's a yellow color. So let's check our direction. Um, I still think we're heading the right way uh, based on that map that we looked at. All right, so we're going to just keep sailing this way. The speed doesn't matter. Let's talk about Atlas, right? So I'm going to bring up uh, my notes here. So. Bear with me as I bring up my notes. Uh, let's move those and let's move it here. And we have Atlas, right? What is Atlas? So Atlas is um, a ga uh, game, thank you, from Wildcard Studios. Uh, it is also uh, published by Grapeshot Games. Um, it is running on the Unreal Engine. So if you look at this fantastic ocean, uh, you look at the fantastic uh, look on the sky. This is Unreal, right? Actually, Unreal Engine 4.5. Heavily modified, but it is Unreal 4.5. Just like Fortnite, um, here's a drop. Notice one of the gameplay eyes I'm here is they have drops. So we're going to just stare at it. What they have is flotsam in the ocean. There are things that you could pick up that um, have different rarities uh, that's a gold so it's the lowest rarity um, but okay back to our saying because I'm get distracted by the game it's, it's so fun to me um, a I enjoy sailing but this is a different story so Unreal Engine 4.5 uh, it has an animations from the Unreal Engine the Unreal animations are uh, called well, blueprints is one way to refer to them within uh, 4.5 they're unreal uh, you also have uh, true sky which is a weather simulator that they licensed um, 
there's also, oh, we're having some server problems, and there's a ship of the dead ahead. One of the things we have in this game are ships of the dead uh, that can destroy your ship uh, and others. Um, I sailed through one yesterday, but they made some changes. I don't know if I can sail through this one today. Um, but, okay, so True Sky uh, is what they a license for weather. You see the wind and the, and the rain, which is not coming yet. They license that. Look at the ship that is gone. It vanishes. They license Battle Eye, which is a cheat or anti-cheat engine. Uh, so they did that, um, and they uh, made some changes to other things, uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, I just think, what is this? I just fell off the boat. Um, that's interesting. And I'm not swimming the right direction. Oh, it's a mermaid. I wonder if she's going to kill me. Let's find out. Yep. Pretty much. She's going to kill me. She's not a nice mermaid, so she's trying to drown me. And I think she's going to succeed. Wow, that's a new one. Oh, i got to get away from the mermaid. Using their game. Doesn't look like I'm making it away from the mermaid. Let's see. This is not a pretty mermaid. Oh, see, the game is you're supposed to stop. Wow, this is not working. I got away from the mermaid, but now I'm going to die if I don't get to the ship. Because there are probably sharks. And jellyfish and tuna. And I also have to breathe, which I'm almost out of air. There's a bass. I'm suffocating, and I may or may not make it. I don't think I'm going to make it. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Let's see if I get air. Oh, made it just in time away from the mermaid. Interesting game. Uh, interesting. Now i got to get above the raft here. Um, and there's a shark. I'm not going to make it out of here. Let's die. And I was killed by a level 10 shark. Okay, now, an interesting factor with this game is you can respawn at the bed. One of the things I had on the raft was a bed. Um, I've now respawned under the bed. Well, that's not going to do very well. I'm going to end up beaten by the shark again if I don't get on the raft. Let's see if I can get on the raft. Nope, I'm getting stuck by the shark again. This isn't fair. Oh, that's a big shark. <laughs> Let's see, can I jump up? Up, 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 on the raft. Okay. So, I'm on the raft. I'm half dead. Um, let's blame the mermaid. Um, sharks, eh, not really their fault. All right, now we're going again. We had an exciting part of that game there. Um, interesting. They added, at least I think they added, I didn't see any mermaids yesterday or the day before, and I did a lot of sailing. I did pretty, you know, four or five, six sectors. Um, anyways, now I got to thaw myself. So let's stand by the fire and thaw myself. Not burn myself. Okay, so we're going to keep sailing and we can talk while we sail. Hopefully no mermaid comes through again. Um, so, alright. Unreal 4.5. Uh, animations, they're using their own blueprints. Uh, they are using True Sky, which they licensed, which you can use in either Unreal or Unity. Uh, Battle Eye, an anti-cheat engine. Again, they licensed it. They didn't create it. They licensed it to use. They have to integrate it with their their uh, systems. Here's the interesting part. And I'm going to uh, stop for a second here and uh, stop the gameplay because I want to show you a few things. So we're going to stop the ship real quick. And boom. Okay. Sh sails closed. We're going to get out. And then we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back and look at some more, more gameplay. But the interesting part to me, we'll get out of that music, is uh, Unreal itself, right? So not only does um, Atlas use Unreal, um, Atlas also uses a uh, part of Unreal. Let's see, let's pull it up on the D drive here. Now you're looking at all that stuff. So D drive, um, Steam. 
uh, go to Steam Apps. Whoops, wrong one. Go to Steam Apps. I go to Common. Um, and you have the games I've currently downloaded on this laptop. And one of them is Shooter Game. Now, interesting, under Atlas, there is this thing called Shooter Game. Um, which is fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. What Atlas has done is they have gone in and they have started from a project called Shooter Game to create their software. Now, the step to take this a step further is not only did they start this software from Shooter Game, they started this software from Arc, which people found the Arc uh, menus and you can get to them. That's because the Arc folders are still here right the arc client folders are still in uh, the steam portions of atlas and again that's fine i have no issue with that i have no issue with buying um, an engine to reuse i have no no problem buying uh, or then using a starter project to launch your own project that's great that's what you get when you've licensed an engine you get to use that code um why would you spend time writing your own um, if you knew it was good code, if it was tested, and if it worked, take it, modify it, change it, make it your own. But yeah, why not? Um, some people have a problem with uh, Atlas being based on Arc. I, I have no issue whatsoever. Um, some people originally had problems with uh, software companies using engines. They expected everyone to write their own. Well, why would you do that? We don't get mad at Ford for reusing their engines in different cars. We don't get mad at, you know, Chrysler for reusing the Hemi in different cars and trucks. It makes sense. Why wouldn't you do that? The same thing with this company, right? Wildcard Studios developed it. It was published by Grapeshot Games. They had this code, and they wanted to make a different game. And I have got no issue with using uh, Arc because Arc, which I haven't played yet, but I want to play, is different than Atlas. So significantly different time frame that it doesn't make sense just to do a, a DLC. It, it's a different game, and I have no issue with them using it. Now, some people do, and that's their opinion. I, I think it's smart, right? I think it's a good idea to reuse something you know already works. Now, the problem is you also have some issues that were in the past come forward again, especially if you really don't know what the cause of that defect is. That defect could come back, you know, when you go forward. Now, again, it's interesting that they reused Arc. They have the structures. They have the folders. They have all this still inside their shooter game project, which I laugh at. But it's still funny that here I am, you know, Digital Pepper Studios, a two-person studio, um, takes assets in Unity and sometimes Unreal. And we uh, buy them and we license them and we use them. And if, it, if we have licensed the code, we use the code, we tweak the code if we need to. If we, in the case of like in the case of Bandalai for, um, for, for Atlas, we haven't licensed the code to write, we just licensed the end product or the DLLs, we do that as well. There's a couple of DLLs that Digital Piper Studios uses within Unity. Uh, one is called Rewired, fantastic uh, for different controllers. You can switch between keyboard, you can switch between mouse and um joystick and ps4 joystick and xbox joystick and, and all this sort of stuff just already pre-written and i don't need to write it um and that's okay because it works we can modify the, the front end make it look a little bit different but it's still the same code we also use something that we'll look at later in a different episode uh, called orc right the orc framework fantastic rpg framework uh, for unity um but we get the if you use the free version, you get the DLLs, right? If you get the uh, the paid version, which we uh, have paid for, then we can go in and make changes to the code if we want to. But I don't want to, unless there's a really valid reason to make a code change in something somebody else built, I'm not gonna do it. Now, if it's a, a blocker, okay, right? So in the case of Atlas, there are some things that may have had the change, but you don't wanna do that unless you have to. All right, so now, Atlas itself. Let's talk about its rollout. The rollout of, of Atlas was not well done. 
right? So I'm going to give it a critique. It is, it was not well done at all. Um, so on game day one, 1221, it was supposed to be much earlier, three weeks earlier, after a bunch of delays, game day one, rubber banding was insane. I couldn't get five feet in the game without rubber banding. So I quit for a while. Came back a couple hours later, terrible rubber banding. Okay, forget it. I got other stuff to do. Did that. Next day, a little better. Still insane amount of rubber banding. When we finally got to December 24th, right? This is 22nd, 23rd, 24th. This is four, three days later. You were able to play the game without major rubber banding. Once in a while, and like a server crossing we noticed earlier, you would get some rubber banding, but it is nowhere near what it was the first day. So they've improved. Right, so they did that. Um, then on the, it was pretty good, the 25th, the 26th, the 27th. On the 28th, I couldn't connect again. I connected in the morning after 11 a.m. I couldn't connect again until like 10 p.m. That was something on the server. They made a server change, actually a couple, and finally a bunch of were able to log back in. Again, this is all changes. And if you notice, they made, if not hourly, bi-hourly changes uh, within uh, Atlas that either affected the server or the client. Um, and it shows that when you make changes that quick, that's a configuration change. That's a change where you don't have to recompile the code. It's a property file or something on the outside that gives a number to the software so the software doesn't have to have it hard-coded in. Um, so, again... Configuration changes are real quick. If they're coming hourly, even daily, right? Possibly even weekly, their configuration changes because they have to test them and everything like that. But if they're code changes, server or client side code changes, you're talking weeks between a patch. If their process has anything well done about it, it's going to take weeks, right? If not months, because it, there's a backlog of data, especially if this. You know, when, since this was developed from ARC, they know of a list of defects that are already out there. Now, I'm assuming they have a different set of code here, which they have to. So they have a different set of code than ARC. So when ARC has a defect, and now Atlas has a defect in the same code, there should be, hopefully, some sort of synchronization or some sort of synchronization or just telling the folks that, you know, those on ARC discovered a defect and they fixed it, and this is how they did it so Atlas can do it, or vice versa. That makes for a little bit of double work, but they've now chosen to go with two separate products, which again is totally fine. I think it's interesting that they have all the DLCs from um, Arc in here uh, and some pre-coming ones from, from Atlas, uh, but it's interesting. Again, they, they've taken this and they've decided to split it off into two products. I have no issue with that. I think it's a good idea. I think they are distinct products. I think a pirate MMO, even a survival MMO, is completely different than a dinosaur MMO. This is not stories that can be compatible. I think that's just the way it's going to work. Now let's talk about the folder structure again. Now that we've been <laughs> attacked by a mermaid, that was pretty cool. That was new to me. I hadn't done that. Um, so the folder structure, uh, we had a product uh, we know that it came from a starter project. We know that there's DLCs in here in the past and coming forward, and that's great. Uh, you can open up and see the Unreal assets that you want to see. Um, if you want to, you know, you, you can't always, but it's a good idea. Now, they also have Developer Toolkit for Arc, which to me looks interesting. I haven't played with it. I will bet you they'll be coming out with a Development Toolkit for Atlas because it's the same thing. Right, it's the same code to begin with. That's branched off, but it's a different code set. But you're gonna, I think, you're gonna have developer tools the same way. So let's walk through this and rehash it real quick. Uh, it's Unreal Engine 4.5, heavily modified, but Unreal Engine 4.5. Uh, the animations were homegrown, in other words, they were built in uh, Unreal. Uh, their animation blueprints. Uh, they did do a weather simulator lease license uh, with True Sky. They did a license with uh, the anti cheat engine um, Battle Eye. Uh, they used a cutoff of the code from Arc. And the Arc originally used a shooter game starter project from Unreal, which again, I think it's a great idea. Why would you take something that 
you have to write from scratch. If you can pick up uh, parts and build it from that, that work, what does it matter? Where you're paying 60 bucks in this case, 25 bucks for a game that even if you only play the game for 10 hours, you just paid 250 an hour for an entertainment. That's nothing, right? I mean, that's that's nothing to what's going on. So I think it's a great idea. I think it's a good idea to do it. I think they've got some things to fix. I think the launch um, has some work. I think they need to have a deployment team. Let's talk about that for a second. You have um, software companies that are doing these releases that they're unprepared for. Whether they delay or not, uh, they're unprepared for. They they show what's called immaturity in software release. Um, that doesn't mean that they're bad. Uh, that just means that they've whoever is releasing or moving the software into release format has not done this over and over and over and over again. They have, may have done it one or twice. So they are probably relying on superstars on the development team uh, to build this code and move it forward. Well, that's great in a short-term run. In a long-term run, that's not so good. You need to have somebody who's a SME, who is a subject matter expert on moving code, on compiling code. This is not a developer because that's what you have to do for your job. You have to spend eight hours a day working with deployments. Now, this one company, this one game may not have enough deployments to do that. But you have, they have other software, right? So to, so you have this ability to have a team that does deployments. Now, better yet, what if you don't? What if you don't have a team that can do that? Well, you look around. I will bet you that there is a company that could vendor or be your vendor for deployments only, right? They don't have to know the nitty gritties of your code. They have to know how to deploy code. They have to know how to set up the processes for taking a build of code and going from scratch to test to production. It's shown that, or it has been shown, that when you have bugs and defects coming in and going out of code that, that seems to have been fixed and then it's not fixed and then it's fixed, that is an indication that their build process is immature. Code is getting back in there that was merged incorrectly. Again, not a something that's bad on a person. It's just an immaturity in not having a team to do that. So you need to work on that, right? So I think Atlas and Grape, Sh Grape Shot Games and Wildcard Studios, they have some things they need to fix. It's probably Wildcard Studios who's doing the development and the rollout. They need to work on that, right? So for itself, I'm going to, like I said, I enjoyed that little bit with the mermaid. That was new. I enjoyed, I enjoy sailing. I like how that works. Um, I'd like to get to a bigger ship, but I keep getting killed. That's another story. Um, it's interesting to me. We're going to cut that part out. Because it's interesting to me, I am willing to overlook some issues, right? The animation <laughs> really needs some work. Um, that animation, again, it's being homegrown. They built it in Unity, or excuse me, Unreal. Whether or not they built it or a contractor built it is immaterial. They're building it. They're not licensing animations. There are uh, and the companies that license their animations. It's so good. Adobe has some that they license. Granny uh, animations license. ESO uses Granny, ESO, Bethesda, or Zenimax Studios did not create their animations, right? They they licensed the software from Granny. Now, they could create some of their own, but they're using the, the Granny one to do it. The Unreal one, which is good, I just think, I don't think it's good enough. I also don't think the art is good enough when it comes to the animals. Now, it's better. It's not great, but it's better. A little blocky, but it's better. Um, I, some people don't like the way the person editor allows you to do all sorts of weird stuff with bodies, but you know what? They allowed, that's okay. That's their choice to do that. Doesn't matter to me. And I know it affects immersion. Some people don't like that, but I don't know. Again, to me, it's okay. Um, with this game, <clears throat> with the mermaid and, and with, uh, everything that goes on in the survival and we'll do, we'll come back and look at more detailed pieces of it later. Um, and a longer review. But for now, 
uh, on December 29th, 2018. I want to give, or I'm going to give uh, Atlas a 5 out of 10. Now, I think they'll be higher than that in a month. I think there are two, maybe. I think they'll be like an 8. I think they'll get to an 8 out of 10. Um, but I don't think they're going to get uh, worse. I think they're going to get better. I think they had some changes that they should have been able to do ahead of time before launch. They didn't do. They're going to have an uphill battle to take on the the, the, the Steam um, comments. Because uh, some people love to be negative. And you gave them a perfect opportunity the way you lo- this game was launched. Um, I don't think there's anybody out there that does a, a defender just software launching but if i had the uh, the druthers and the ability i would do that because this is something i've seen in a lot of software companies especially video companies or video game companies the dish these launches are not done well and it's not a fault of the person it's not a fault of the team it's a fault of a uh, process of using the same people that do development to do the release that's just an immature model. It doesn't. It's just not bad. It's just immature. Just like when you, you know, people are immature. They need to grow. They need to get better. So what I would hope is that these software companies would would say, hey, you know what? Next time we need to have a better launch or a better movement of this code. Let's start looking into a team to do just that. Let's look into a team that does deployments. Let's look into a team that does launches, because. It just isn't there, right? You may have the marketing, and the marketing was done well, but the launch was not done well. And it's not just uh, Atlas and, and Wildcard Studios and Grapeshot Games. It's it, almost every launch I've seen has been hosed up. Um, <clears throat> Intrepid Studios, fantastic game with uh, uh, Ashes of Creation Apocalypse. I one of the first battle royales I really enjoy playing. Um, I enjoy uh, Fortnite, which Unreal, by the way. Um, just like Intrepid, uh, excuse me, Ashes of Creation, just like Atlas, Unreal 4, you know. But they also had a flub launch. Um, and that's easy to do. It's easy to flub a launch of software if you don't know how big the hill is you need to climb. You haven't been through it before. You haven't done it day in, day out, day in, day out. You need to have a team, whether it's internal or external, that that's what they do. They are the SMEs of deployment. They do that, and they'll do it again, and they'll do it again. If a developer uh, or a team lead is going to be your deployment person, they may do it once, twice, three, four times a year, maybe. They're not going to be your experts. They're not going to be the ones, oh, yeah, I did that two weeks ago. I know exactly how to fix it. Boom, or better yet. On one problem, they have it on one release, so they fix it before they get to the next one. Right? They have the process changed to accommodate that. They know what to do. They do postmortems on just the launches, let alone everything else. So if you're a developer or a team lead, you don't have time to do all that stuff. You just want to push it. That's what you want. That's your job is to push it, fix it, push it, fix it, push it. You're not going to be judged on that, maybe. You're going to be judged on your code. So, again, I would suggest to these companies that they look into software maturity they look into release teams it's out there people do this over and over and over and over again there are people who do deployments this is what i would suggest in my opinion maybe i'm wrong again that's the way i would suggest to go but this is my look at atlas technically um i will come back in a month maybe two do another review i may do a, a game play video um because that was fun i enjoyed (laughs) being surprised by the mermaid that was interesting um and i'm not very good at their mini game i don't know why i can't seem to remember to to hold on and wait to the second click but i'll figure that one out but again this is storm's lord uh this is my technical review of atlas um i'm giving at this point a five out of ten i think i'll come back in a month and it's going to be eight out of ten but we'll find out all right And that's it for today. You can follow us uh, over at DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. There are all sorts of links for our social media, including Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, uh, 
You can check out our Patreon.com Dungeon Crawler Network. You can also check out Digital Piper Studios. We have uh, several mobile games that we have in production for uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we're moving towards some further ones. We're working on a 2D platformer for Xbox, PS4, and Steam, or maybe Windows. Uh, but again, check us out. This is Stormstart, and I will see you next week. <laughs>